morning, First Baptist Church, uh, and to all of you who are linked near and far, families and friends, we want to welcome you to our first Sunday in June service. Uh, we want to thank our tech team for keeping us together and connected uh, throughout this whole pandemic. And we also want to welcome uh, the candidate Jennifer Foy uh, for worshiping with us this morning. And we wish her success in all of her endeavors. And all of you who are uh, celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, uh, we want to say happy birthday to each of you. And may God bless you and may God keep you in every way. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come at this hour to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your ever-loving kindness. Lord, we just thank you for keeping us. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults to see our needs. We're praying, Lord, uh, for Sister Cross. We understand that she has gone through surgery and the family is asking for prayer. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. We pray, Father, that you would deliver her, Lord, from all of her afflictions. And we ask, Lord, that you would lift her up, that she will know that you're still sitting on the throne. Father, I'm praying for the sick at First Baptist Church. I'm praying for the bereaved. I'm praying, Lord, for us as a country. Lord, that our hearts and minds would turn unto you because, Lord, you are our only answer. And so, Lord, we just thank you for keeping us. And we pray, Father, as we move toward post-COVID-19, Lord, that you would have created in us a clean heart and renewed in us the right spirit that we can be able, Lord, to go on and advance your kingdom. For you brought the kingdom to us. Help us to understand that kingdom. Help us to work the principles of the kingdom that we might benefit from all that the kingdom has for us. Lord, we want to thank you for our teachers in Sunday school this morning. We want to thank you for our words. We pray, Father, that you pour out your spirit afresh among us, that we be encouraged to go on and do the work of the kingdom of God. Bless this service now as we go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The covenant this morning will be led by myself and Brother Clarence Wilson, and I ask you congregation to, to join in. What common experience leads us into spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with God and one another? Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. By what pledge do we turn from the ways of the world? We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. What are some of our privileges and duties in this our own church? To strive for advancement of this church in, the, in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections prayers and services above every organization of human origin to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God has entrusted to us? To contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us toward its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor and spread the gospel throughout the world. What commitment do we make regarding our differences and disagreements? In case of differences of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will continue to pray and seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. For the sake of our home and loved ones, what tasks do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God. For the sake of the unsaved for whom Christ died, to what manner of life and conduct are we solemnly pledged? We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and to stir up each other unto every good, good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate with each other's joy and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report to seek to live to the glory of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. For the good of our own spiritual development and for the best interest of the master's kingdom, what do we promise to do if we move beyond the reach of the church? When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Humbly confessing, confessing our, our past, past sins, sins. We, pray we pray for, for grace, grace and, strength and strength to, to keep, keep these, these our holy vows for the, for the sake, sake of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we come this morning just to say thank you. You are our creator and it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. Lord, we thank you because in spite of all 
that is going on around us, Lord, you're still providing for us, caring for us, protecting us, making a way for us. And Lord, we just say thank you. Lord, as I'm praying, thank you for First Baptist Church. Lord, we ask you to bless our pastor, Pastor Davis and his family. Bless all of our leaders and Lord, bless all of our members as we move toward discipleship. Lord, be with us and stand by us. You have provided this beautiful earth. And not only that, you put us in charge and you gave us the ability and the knowledge to do those things that would bring your kingdom, not only up in heaven, but on earth. But Lord, as we pray, we thank God that we are free from worry. Lord, you have a vaccine that will take care of hatred, misunderstanding, voter suppression, uh -huh. shooting with guns, yeah. all the evilness that's in this world. You have a vaccine. And that vaccine is you said, if my people who are called by my name mm -hmm. humble themselves and pray, and seek your face, turn from their wicked ways. And then, Lord, you say that we will hear from heaven and that you would heal our land. Thank you that you have provided a way where we don't have to worry when yes. we call on you. Boy. So, Lord, just be with us. Lord, as I always in my prayer, Create within us clean hearts. Renew within us the right spirit. Yeah. Lord, that we may do your will and not our own. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
First Baptist Choir uh, for that beautiful, beautiful selection, reminding us when we were praising and thanking God in, in the sanctuary. Amen. We thank God for the First Baptist Church Choir and to all of you who have participated uh, thus far. We thank God for you. Let us continue to pray for one another. Let us continue uh, to remain faithful because God is with us and to remind us to vote. Uh, we know that our voting is under attack. And so therefore, I want to remind us to cast our vote uh, and play our part because democracy demands that we participate. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come at this hour to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We want to thank you, Father, for being so good and so kind to us. We want to thank you, Father, for leading us and sheltering us and shielding us through all of the things that are going on in our nation and around the world. Father, we should not be surprised because the Bible teaches us that these things must be. But Father, you are also reminding us that we must be ready because you could appear at any time. Lord, I'm praying for First Baptist Church. I'm praying for her maturity. I'm praying for her growth. And not only First Baptist, but every church in the body of Christ. Father, I'm just praying that you remember our youth, our young people. They're seeing so much, not only in their own community, but they're seeing so much around the world. And Lord, we know that they are babes and many of them may not understand, but help us to be that light before them. Help us to walk the walk before them. Help us, Father, be the kind of disciples that we should be, Lord, so that they can put their hope in you as we have put our hope in you. And Father, as we go forth, Lord, we are looking for you to lead and guide us. We're looking for you to protect us. We're looking, Lord, for you to work your goodwill and purpose through us. Now, Father God, I pray that you hide me behind the cross and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart uh, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. These and all blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. I call your attention to the book of Acts. Acts, the 18th chapter. And we're going to read verses 24 through 28. That's Acts. The 18th chapter, verses 24 through 28. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Acts, the 18th chapter, verses 24 through 28. And we will find these words. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of the Lord more accurately. And when he desired to go to Attica, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. For he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. I would like to use as a subject of this morning, are you fully vaccinated for the kingdom of God? Are you fully vaccinated for the kingdom of God? It's a subject that we're going to talk about this morning. Are you fully vaccinated for the kingdom of God? We have been hearing a lot about vaccinations during this pandemic. Many people have had one shot and others have been fully vaccinated. There are others who have not been 
vaccinated at all, making it difficult to get through this pandemic. Those who are fully vaccinated have a little more freedom with others who are also fully vaccinated. Now, according to the CDC, those who are fully vaccinated can join with others who are fully vaccinated indoors and outdoors without wearing a mask. Fully vaccinated people don't spread the virus like unvaccinated people are capable of doing. If the nation, if America can get at least 80% of the population fully vaccinated, we could reach what they call herd immunity. Science shows there are benefits for being fully vaccinated. Now, if this is true physically, it is also true spiritually. If we could get Christians fully vaccinated spiritually, we could transform the world. Do you know you have to be fully vaccinated to enter the kingdom of God? You see, it's not enough to believe. Scripture says, you believe there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. It's not enough to confess the faith. It's not enough to read scriptures. It's not enough to be an intellectual orator of scripture. It's not enough to just go to church. It's not enough to know the creedal principles of religion. These things are good, but they are not enough. To be in the kingdom of God and operating with maximum capacity and effectiveness, we need something more. We need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And unless we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we are not fully vaccinated spiritually. This is what Jesus was basically telling Nicodemus. You see, Nicodemus was a Jew, a Pharisee, a chartered member of the Sanhedrin Council, an exclusive intelligentsia class about 70, who was the Supreme Court in religious and social matters. Nicodemus, was schooled in Jewish prudence. He knew the law and the due process of the law, but he was not fully vaccinated spiritually. He was educated, but not vaccinated. Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see nor enter into the kingdom of God. Whatever is flesh is flesh, whatever spirit is spirit, marvel not, you must be born again. In other words, you can be well educated, have a title and a good position in society and all of the connections that go with it. But if you are not vaccinated spiritually, you cannot see nor enter into the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, people who see and enter the kingdom of God will do so with others who are fully vaccinated. They will have access and enjoyment that unvaccinated others cannot. Therefore, if people want the benefits of God's kingdom and all that it represents, they must be fully vaccinated spiritually. We are in a spiritual warfare. And since the weapons of our warfare are, are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, we need to be fully vaccinated spiritually. When we are half vaccinated, we cannot stand against Satan the devil, the enemy of our souls. The devil loves 
when we are not fully vaccinated so that he can take advantage of our vulnerabilities. When we are not fully vaccinated, the devil attacks our character. He attacks our attitude. He attacks our minds. He attacks our mouths. He attacks our temperament. He attacks our ability to be effective for the kingdom of God. The devil would rather deal with had vaccinated or no vaccinated people than to deal with those who are fully vaccinated spiritually. The reason the postmodern church is losing battles in areas it should be willing, winning is many Christians are not fully vaccinated. They are partially vaccinated or not vaccinated spiritually at all. Partially vaccinated people, they can operate. They can preach, they can teach, they can sing and they can pray, but they cannot cast out devils, lay hands on the sick and they recover, nor do any significant work for the kingdom of God because they are partially vaccinated. They are believers, but partially vaccinated. You see, Judas was partially vaccinated. And this is why he portrayed Jesus and ended up hanging himself. Ananias and Zachariah believed, but because they were partially vaccinated, they lied to the Holy Spirit about their earnings and lost their lives. Alexander the coppersmith was not, uh, was not fully vaccinated. And because he was partially vaccinated, Paul said this about him. He did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on guard against him because he strongly opposes our message of the gospel. My brothers and sisters, that was another character in the book of First John. And his name was Diotrephus. Diotrephus believed, but he was partially vaccinated. And because he was partially vaccinated, he was not welcoming other Christians in the church and putting other Christians out of the church because he loved to have preeminence. There are a number of people being and now partially vaccinated spiritually, causing all kinds of hell and confusion in the church. They are in the pulpit, they are in the pew, they are inside and outside the church because being partially vaccinated, God has some of you, but not all of you. Let me repeat that. Because being partially vaccinated, God has some of you, but not all of you. If God has only some of you and not all of you, you are not able to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You are like a soldier with only a helmet while the rest of you is naked. What can a soldier do on the battlefield when he is not fully suited for battle? Having a helmet and no breastplate doesn't mean you're fully prepared for battle. The scripture says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, sending soldiers to war with only a helmet and nothing else, they are defeated before they start out because they don't have the full armor on. And so it is with many Christians. They don't have their full armor on. They are not fully vaccinated. And this is a major reason the postmodern church cannot grow and retain the growth they have gained when their strife when there's confusion, when there's division, backbiting, homongering, envy, and jealousy, these things are tearing up churches as a result of partially vaccinated or no vaccinated uh, people at all in the church. Too many Christians are walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. They are carnal-minded 
instead of being spiritual minded. When people have not been fully vaccinated, the Holy Spirit has not taken over their whole life of which they have died to themselves and come alive in Jesus Christ. Fully vaccinated people don't love this life more than they love God. Well, what do you mean about this, Pastor? Let me give you a few examples. You see Shadrach, Meshach, and the Abednego. They were fully vaccinated and willing to go into a, a fiery furnace than to bow to an idol God. Daniel was fully vaccinated and he was willing to go into a lion's den than to stop praying to God. Esther was fully vaccinated when she had to go and face the king to save her people from genocide. The prophets were fully vaccinated and they spoke truth to power. My brothers and sisters, when the disciples of Jesus were fully vaccinated through the Pentecost experience, they went out into the marketplaces unafraid to say, it is better to obey God rather than men. To do mighty work for the kingdom of God, we must be, we have to be fully vaccinated spiritually. Now in our text, Apollo was an eloquent man mighty in scripture. He was a man who could move you with his words. The scripture says that he was fervent in the spirit, which means he was naturally strong. He was greatly influenced by John the Baptist. He talked diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Apollo had not heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Evidently, he was not part of the Pentecost spirit, nor heard how the Holy Spirit had come like a mighty rushing wind upon the 120 worshipers in the upper room. So you see, he didn't know how the Holy Spirit's cleansed, empowered, filled, and anointed the disciples of Jesus, giving them supernatural abilities to carry on the ministry of Jesus Christ. As powerful as Apollo was in preaching, he was not fully vaccinated by the Holy Spirit. He was limited because the Holy Spirit had not been inculcated within him. Being fervent in spirit, he was not sufficient uh, to give the power to overcome the power of the devil. He was like Samson who had natural strength. But when the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, Samson had supernatural strength to kill a lion with his bare hands, to uplift city gates from their foundation, and to take a jawbone of an ass and kill a thousand men. Unless Apollo had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, he was vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. And he is without all of the tools and the weapons of the Holy Spirit. Natural strength is not enough to overcome the power of Satan, the devil. When Aquilus and Priscilla heard Apollo in the temple, they knew that he needed more. He was well educated, but he needed more. He was eloquent but he needed more. He was an outstanding orator, but he needed more. He was well versed in the scriptures, but he needed more. He was charismatic, but he needed more. Yes, he could move people with his words, but he needed more. Apollo needed to be vaccinated fully by the Holy Spirit. And once he is fully vaccinated spiritually, he has all the power and the tools of that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Too many Christians need more than what they have. They need to be fully vaccinated by the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, when we are fully vaccinated, we can preach the gospel to the poor. Yes, we can heal the brokenhearted. We can proclaim liberty to the captives, recover the sight of the blind, and set at liberty them that are oppressed. When we are fully vaccinated, we can love our enemies, bless them that curse us, do good to them that hate us, 
and pray for them that despitefully use and persecute us. Yes, when we are fully vaccinated, we can lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover. When we are fully vaccinated, we can call those things that are not as though they were. When we are fully vaccinated, we can transform our dark yesterdays into bright tomorrows. Yes, we can pour down prodigious mountains of despair and lift up valleys of possibilities. Yes, when we are fully vaccinated, we can further God's kingdom in areas that are unthinkable. unthinkable. Yes, when we are fully vaccinated, we can heal the sick. We can order demons out of the region and put to flight the forces of evil. I'm talking about when we are fully vaccinated spiritually. When we are fully vaccinated spiritually, we can rebuild what has been torn down. We can save our homes. We can save our schools. We can save our churches. We can save our nation from the takeover of the enemy. When we are fully vaccinated, we can redeem the evil times. We can right what is wrong and we can bring order out of chaos. Yes, when we are vaccinated fully spiritually, we can transform pain into power. We can transform oppression into opportunities, sorrow into songs, trials into triumphs, and racism into redemption. Are you fully vaccinated this morning? Are you fully vaccinated for the kingdom of God? Have you been born again? Have you died to yourself and come alive in Jesus Christ? If your answer to these questions is a resounding yes, then you are fully vaccinated for the kingdom of God. And then we can transform this whole world into a new world. I want to ask the question again. Are you fully vaccinated spiritually? I'm not interested in how many degrees you got. I'm not interested in the, 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 the titles you have. I'm not interested in your position. I'm not interested in your zip code. But have you been fully vaccinated spiritually? And if you have, then we can transform this old world into a new world. This 21st century is calling, not for denominationalism, not for all of these non-kingdom things that we put energy in, but it's calling for fully vaccinated spiritual people who can stand, having done all to stand. And so First Baptist, the question to you, and family and friends, those of you who are linked in near and far, the question is, are you fully vaccinated spiritually? And if you are, then God can use you. If you are, you become a threat to the kingdom of God. If you are, then you are an asset to the kingdom of God. All these other things does not matter to the, to the kingdom of this world. Yes, it's good to get education. It's good to have a degree. It's good to have a position. It's good to have money to bank. It's good to have all of these, these external things. Those things are well and good, but they will not stop the onslaught of the kingdom of this world. The only thing that's going to push the devil out of your life, the life of your children, the life of your marriage, the life of your community, the life of the state, and the life of the nation, we got to have enough fully vaccinated Christians to do the work of the kingdom. It's not about what we say, but what we do. So I want to challenge you this morning. I want you to think about, am I fully vaccinated spiritually? And if you are, then God can use you in these times in which we live. The door of the church is open by letter. Christian experience candidate for baptism. There may be somebody who wants to come to Christ. There may be somebody who believed the report in their hearts. The Bible says if you believe in Christ and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Now, all these people that I've talked about being partially vaccinated, I'm not saying that they were lost. I'm just saying that God pulled them off the scene to be an example for us so that we can be fully vaccinated. Their eternal reward they still may be saved, but he's telling you and I, don't come halfway with me. You got to come all the way. Don't just put half of the armor on, put it all on. Don't just have half of my spirit, have all of my spirit. And if you do this, 
then we can be the hands and the feet and the eyes and tongues of the master in this dying culture and nation in which we live. And so my brothers and sisters, if you want to come to Christ or if you want to come and join us, you can put it in the chat, you can get in contact with one of our deacons, you can call the church office or get in contact with the pastor. We will, we will take over and help you get to your destination. We want you to join us. We want you to be a part of us. It's all about the spirit. We should know now with this COVID-19, it didn't care, doesn't care what your race is, doesn't care what your degrees are, doesn't care what your position is, doesn't care about your title. It's an invisible enemy. God is trying to open up our sight to get us to see. This is a spiritual warfare. There's things that you don't see, but you better be fully vaccinated spiritually if you're going to serve in the army of the Lord. And too often, we've had partially vaccinated or no vaccinated people at all in the church leading positions that they should not be there. It's, it takes fully vaccinated people spiritually to help transform this old world into a new world. Now, as the Brother Fox is bringing us a song, I want you to think about, are you fully vaccinated spiritually? And may God keep you. And may God bless you. Apollo needed something else. He needed to be vaccinated in order, in order to resist the wiles of the devil. You and I need to be saved. Regardless of your education, your degree, your position, your zip code, that's fine. You and I need to be fully vaccinated spiritually. We're going to be triumphant in this land, in this world, and we need to. You have to have on the whole armor of God, all of it, and don't leave any part open because we are in a spiritual warfare, and we need to understand that in this 21st century. Now, at this time, we're going to get prepared for our communion, and we're going to uh, prepare, and then we're going to have 
um, Reverend James Walker, and then we're going to have a prayer by Deacon Kim Jordan. Amen. The scripture by Reverend James Walker. Good evening, Christian friends. Today in scripture, the Lord's Supper, will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. I'll be reading for you the ESA version of it, and you will find words similar to this in your Bible. This is the message that I have received from the Lord. I also told it to you. This is what happened on the night that Jesus' enemies took hold of him. The Lord Jesus picked up some bread to eat with his disciples. He thanked God for the bread, and then he broke it into pieces. He said, this is my body that I give to save you. Eat this bread so that you remember me. After they had eaten supper, Jesus took a cup of wine. He spoke to his disciples again. He said, this cup shows my blood that will pour out when I die. God now makes a new arrangement to save people because of my death. Whatever you drink from the cup, in this way, do it to remember me. Every time that you eat bread and drink from the cup like this, you are showing something. You are showing people what the Lord's death means. You should continue to do this until he returns. Since that is true, you must be careful. Eat the bread and drink from the cup in a way that is right. Anyone who does not eat that will be, anyone who does not do that will be guilty. They are showing that they do not respect the Lord's body and his blood that he offered as a sacrifice. So everyone must think carefully about how they eat the bread and they drink from the cup. Everyone who eats and drink must understand how important the Lord's body is. If anyone does not recognize this, God will punish them. That is why many people are weak and sick. So some of you have even died because of this. But if we think carefully about ourselves, then God will not need to punish us. But the Lord does need to punish us sometimes. When, we, when he does that, he is teaching us not to do wrong things. Then we will not be guilty like other people who do not know God. So, my Christian friends, be patient when you meet together to eat the Lord's Supper. Do not start to eat before everyone is ready. If you are hungry, you should eat before you come. Then you may meet together. God will not have any reason to punish you. I will talk about the other things when I come to visit. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. To our most holy and gracious Father, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity that we've had to come together today to lift you up in praise, to praise you with song, 
And Lord God, we thank you to lift you up in prayer and also through your word that we are also fed and uplifted. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have today to come to commune with you. And Lord God, we thank you for um, sending your son, Jesus the Christ, to die upon a cross for the remission of our sins. For Lord God, he shed his body and his blood so that we could forever commune with you. And Lord God, we ask that you would bless the elements today, the bread and the wine as we take them, that we will always remember what he did for us, that he gave us the opportunity to um, leave our sins behind, Lord God, and to go forward with you. Lord God, we just thank you. We lift you up and we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Now we're going to ask uh, Reverend Juanita Graham for communion. Let us unite our hearts. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was in the upper room with his disciples. At that time, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and said, take and eat. This represents my body. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup and blessed it and said, take and drink. This represents the blood that I will shed for the remission of sin. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Let us unite our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful blessing uh, that you gave to us when Jesus died on Calvary's cross, it is a blessing, Father God, that compares to no other. And Father, Jesus' blood that was shed on that old record cross can help to vaccinate us so that we can be ready for the kingdom, so that we can be able to share the good news of the kingdom, so that we can be covered, Father God, as the enemy will try to stop us in doing that task. But we pray by the blood of Jesus Christ, you will cover us and keep us, that we may go and declare to everyone the good news, declare to everyone the testimony that we need to share so that they can know you, Father God, and come into the kingdom as well. We thank you for pastor. We thank you for everyone on the line. And we just thank you, Father God, for another day to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We want to thank you all for linking in with us today. And again, I want you to really think about, are you fully vaccinated spiritually? Because we are in this spiritual warfare. Apollo the Bible says Apollo was a very eloquent man, good diction. He could move people with his words. But Priscilla and Aquila, they heard him. They said, no, 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 he needs something more. He didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then you read further, Paul asked others in Ephesus, do you know about the Holy Spirit? They said, no, we don't know about that. And so he began to teach them about the Holy Spirit. So we got to... We got to preach and teach the whole gospel. Teach it all because Christ is coming again. And you and I need to be in a position to be ready when he comes. But until then, we need to keep on struggling and advancing his kingdom. Amen, amen. God bless each and every one of you. I want to thank all of the participants from the Sunday school up until this point. May God bless you. We hope something was said and done to chill your hearts along the way. Now, at this time, we're going to ask the First Lady uh, to come and give, her, give us her remarks. I'm so glad to be back home with my family and with my wife. So I want to thank all of you for praying for me while I was away uh, caring for my elderly mother. God bless you. First Lady. Good morning. Good morning, church family. Guests and friends, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Let's thank God for the message and the messenger, our pastor, Pastor Davis. Amen. By the word, by the word, are you fully vaccinated for the kingdom of God? 
Lord, help us to put the full armor of God on. Thank you. Thank you for the word, Pastor. Bless you. Always preach with uh, passion, and we receive it today. Let's thank Sister Dunn and Deacon Butler for a wonderful Sunday school lesson. Amen. This morning. Amen. Amen. Free from worry. And an elderly person told Pastor and I all the time if you're going to pray, don't worry. But you, if you're going to worry, then don't even bother to pray. Yes. Again, thank you all so much. Thank you, Sister Dunn and Deacon Butler, for such a wonderful, wonderful lesson this morning. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to those of you who are celebrating your birthday and anniversary this week or this month. We pray that the Lord will continue to shower you with his love, his grace, and many, many more happy, happy birthday and happy anniversary. We thank God for our tech team who's been working tirelessly for over a year. May God bless you. Amen. Yes, you you God. God. You, you. Let's continue to pray for the sick and the shouting in, um, among us and all those who are bereaved. We know that only God can comfort you because we know we live in such a difficult, difficult times. We love you. Stay safe. Have a blessed day and have a blessed week. God bless you. Amen. Sure. Hello, everybody. I hope my father's sermon sank into your hearts as you carry it throughout the day. Um, Thank you, Dead Team, for making this service and all the other services possible uh, through Zoom. We really appreciate you. Um, if you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, uh, we're with you, we're celebrating with you, uh, we're happy for you. Um, may God bless you all as you care, go out um, as uh, to your day. Um, may God bless you, keep you, watch over you, and protect you in all that you do. Have a great day. Amen. amen amen again god bless you and may god keep you at this time now uh we don't give the benediction on the first sunday but we just say turn to someone tell someone text someone <laughs> chat someone email somebody and tell them that you love them and there's nothing he or she can do about it amen. now may the grace of god the sweet communion of the holy spirit rest through and abide in us now and forevermore and the people of God said, Amen. Amen.